Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining me today wherever you are and whenever you are accessing this recording. I am Jessica Gordon-Calvert and I am the Sustainability Education and Engagement Officer for the University College of Estate Management and I am honoured to be sharing our little escape room with you as part of the Escape Rooms Showcase. Now before we uh, really get started, um, I wanted to share with you a little bit of context about the University College of Estate Management, also known as UCM. So UCM is the leading provider of supported online education for the built environment, uh, offering programs such as quantity surveying, building surveying, construction management, and most recently, innovation in sustainable built environments. Um, we were founded in 1919, and in that time, we have built close relationships with professional bodies and received accreditation for our programs. Um, we have two main offices, uh, one here in the UK and one out in Hong Kong, uh, where a large percentage of our international students come from. It's important to note that we don't have a campus and students do not come on site unless for very special occasions such as graduation. Now the majority of our students are undergraduates and about half of all our students are on apprenticeships. 55% um, of our students are aged 26 and above, many of whom uh, also work uh, whilst studying with us. Um, we have many students and alumni all over the world and currently uh, nearly 20% of our current students are based in the localities across the globe. Um, with all this combined, um, we do face some complexities when trying to engage uh, with students outside of their formal learning. So the intention behind our escape room, um, which I'm sharing with you today, um, was to engage students and staff on the topic of sustainability in, a, in, in an informal, fun learning environment. And this very much forms part of our whole institution approach to sustainability happily named GLOBE. Uh, now GLOBE spans five dimensions of work, what we teach, the way we teach, leadership and governance, how we operate and who we influence. Uh, and through this, uh, we're looking at things like health and wellbeing, uh, student staff and alumni engagement. Um, we've launched a new MSc in Innovation in Sustainable Built Environments. Um, we've launched student uh, sustainability initiatives to provide additional opportunities outside of students' formal learning and also provided training and staff, uh, sorry, training and development for all staff. Now, how it all got started, um, as I mentioned before, as part of GLOBE, we launched student sustainability initiatives, uh, which provide students with regular opportunities to engage with sustainability outside of their program. And these are uh, on a mixture of built environment and non-built environment topics. Um, now, when these initiatives were introduced, um, we also introduced our first Go Green Week, uh, which took place last April. And the intention behind it was, uh, again, to bring our learning community together, uh, so staff, students and alumni, on a variety of built environment and non-built environment sustainability topics. Now, at this point, um, a lot of discussions were had uh, with our current student officers for sustainability. Uh, for context, these are volunteer roles um, around ideas and suggestions for potential activities that we could facilitate during that week. Um, my student officers at the time, Donna and Ash, uh, very much wanted to create a fun activity around built environment sustainability and also raise awareness of the sustainable development goals and UCM's progress in sustainability. Uh, now, most of our staff um, are higher education professionals uh, and not built environment ones. Uh, so it was important to strike a balance with the uh, difficulty level uh, of the content uh, for the activity that we decided on. Now, whilst working on another student facing webinar uh, with Hazel, one of our academic team, uh, the suggestion uh, that we could create an escape room using Microsoft OneNote for Go Green Week captured my student officer's attention. And ultimately, that's when the idea was born. So both of my student officers worked and lived in London at the time and had witnessed the amazing redevelopment of the Battersea Power Station and had seen the sustainability work and considerations go into the redevelopment as well. Um, so they asked me uh, if I could create an escape room with them. Uh, and I said, sure, let's do this. Um, it was very much a learning curve for all of us having not used OneNote for anything like this previously. Um, my student officers did most of the research uh, into the power station. 
and also created our less than friendly ghost trio, uh, Frank, Henry and Betty. Um, and I built the escape room and the puzzles behind it, um, which is ironic um, as I'm often the weakest uh, link on an escape room team, um, as I'm sure my colleagues and friends will, will vouch for that. Um, we created the escape room, as I said, initially for Go Green Week uh, and following further edits to the escape room uh, and additional puzzles um, at the request of feedback, we ran this again later in the year uh, during our renamed Climate and Social Action Week. Uh, now I'm going to show you a little bit of our escape room in a moment, uh, but in terms of how we went about playing the game, um, we hosted it through Zoom and required people to register for the activity. This was so we could easily identify which participants were staff, uh, student or alumni, meaning that we could ensure a mixture um, of those within the groups. Um, we set the scene, so my student officers produced a, a few brief intro slides uh, to introduce the topic. Uh, the challenge and the time at hand to break the curse. Um, it was also used as an opportunity to encourage active participation uh, from everyone and to work together to solve the puzzle. As soon as a team had completed, um, at the end, they were asked to enter bananas in pajamas into the chat uh, so we would know who had completed the game first. Um, this also helped set the tone uh, that this was for enjoyment or hopefully enjoyment anyway, um, and a, an informal opportunity rather than a formal one. Um, we had uh, staff hosts per group, uh, so I duplicated the escape room and provided each host with a unique escape room link um, and also provided them with uh, a document containing the answers as well as additional prompts uh, that they could feed into their group if they were a bit stuck. I also provided some training prior to the session um, so that the hosts were familiar with the escape room and also using OneNote itself. Um, we then split the participants up into uh, groups uh, with a maximum of five in a group and put them in uh, into separate breakout rooms with their staff hosts. Uh, now the staff hosts then shared their screens um, showing the escape room and helped facilitate or, or guide uh, our curse breakers. Um, we found it beneficial um, to have one host waiting in the main room for any late arrivals and also to hop in and out of the breakout rooms um, to check progress. Um, so I'm going to share with you um, the uh, escape room now. So please bear with me a second. So the landing page for our escape room looked something like this. Um, again, uh, we reconfirmed the scenario and the task at hand. So our curse breakers had to explore the Battersea power station, uh, find our three ghosts and um, find a way to set them free, ready for the grand opening uh, and that they only had an hour to do so. Um, when we built this escape room, we started off by creating uh, the sections, as you can see on the left hand side, which includes a welcome page, the documents, um, then sections for our three ghosts. So we had Frank, Henry and Betty. Um, we decided to have three sections for each, uh, each ghost, um, with the third section of each uh, for when the participants had ultimately freed or hopefully freed the ghosts. Um, as you can see, there's a padlock symbol uh, on all of the pages on the sections on the left hand side, uh, which if you do decide to build your own, I would recommend adding these locks uh, last. Otherwise, you'll be in a never ending spiral of having to unlock them, uh, particularly if you are new to one note like I was. Um, so their first task um, was to solve a word puzzle guessing the correct words based off the images provided. Um, as you can see, uh, I've already filled this one out for you, so you're safe from guessing uh, the answers for this one today. Um, we've made it very clear um, on, on the first page and, and, and pretty much every other page that um, our passwords are in caps locks, if they are words, uh, to make it uh, easier and a bit more consistent across the board. So we'll just unlock our first level. Um, so once they've done the first task, uh, we provided them with access to Frank and Henry, two of our ghosts, old work files, um, with Betty staying all mysterious and marked as confidential uh, in the hope that they will um, find a way to unlock these uh, later. 
Uh, so we'll start off with Frank. Um, so each ghost section um, contains a collection of fictional and non-fictional written evidence, um, sometimes word puzzles, Sudoku, uh, picture puzzles or, and or cryptograms. Uh, so we try to vary it across, uh, across the three ghosts uh, in the hope of playing on uh, participants' different strengths. Uh, sometimes it's numbers, sometimes it's words, sometimes it's uh, none at all, if you're like me. Um, but hopefully we would have that variety to, to suit everyone's um, um, everyone's uh, skill set or or or, or likes or interests. Um, all the while, um, we threaded through uh, facts and figures relating to the power station itself, um, as was nearly a century ago, uh, and also in terms of the redevelopment. Uh, we also used it as an opportunity to demonstrate progression in the built environment um, in terms of things like health and safety, equality and protection of nature and biodiversity. I'm going to show you another section. Um, as you can see here, we've incorporated information about the redevelopment in terms of their brown roofs. Um, and also, whilst interesting, um, we have provided some trick information uh, to try and distract them and send them on a bit of a wild goose chase as well, uh, which I'm sure they, um, they really appreciated at the time. I'm um, just going to show you uh, bit of Henry's tasks. Um, so we threaded through some video content, as you can see on this first page. So we've got a few videos uh, dotted around as well. Um, I think if we did this again, I would perhaps see about including some audio files as well. Um, but we've definitely included videos here. Um, and one of our most rated puzzles uh, in the feedback uh, was the cryptogram as well. Um, unfortunately, I haven't filled this out for you today, um, but by all means, if you would like to take a screenshot um, and attempt it yourself, you're more than welcome to. Um, I will just show you uh, the last page of Henry's file. Um, so all of the Section 3 passwords are real life locations within the power station. Um, and we use these pages to close the ghost stories um, and link back to related sustainable development goals within the built environment industry, um, why it's important that we consider them, and also actions UCM is taking to address uh, the SDGs in question. Now I will just show you uh, Betty's. Uh, Betty uh, can remain uh, or can be removed from mysterious and confidential, um, and we will show you Betty. Um, so with this uh, number puzzle, I think this is possibly where we added a little bit too much following the feedback. Um, so following the escape room in Go Green Week, we had feedback about increasing the. Uh, difficulty of some puzzles, but also increasing the number of puzzles. And whilst most of the puzzles remained unchanged, um, we added several elements for uh, our Climate and Social Action Week escape room session later in the year. And this one caught a number of our groups out um, and they would have run out of time if it wasn't for the additional prompting of our staff hosts. Um, if we were to do this again, I would perhaps keep the puzzle element, but perhaps simplify it a little bit. Um, we did do some pre-testing um, before the escape room, but obviously it depends on the um, strengths and uh, potential, uh, not weaknesses, but it, it depends on sort of the participants that you get on the day. Um, we didn't necessarily have the same people um, from Go Green Week. Well, no, we had different people. Um, so therefore it's, it's, it's different capabilities and things like that. Um, I'm just gonna show you a little bit more of Betty. I'll just show you this last uh, picture puzzle. Um, so for this, I use things around my home. Um, for this one, very much to the courtesy of my toddler at the time, although perhaps not the not the gin. Um, leaving clues as to the location of Betty being in the engine room, uh, which is our final destination and is a location within the uh, power station. Um, so the Cursed Breakers uh, freed all of our ghosts and the Battersea Power Station redevelopment can finally open safely from ghostly happenings. 
So if we uh, facilitated the escape room again using OneNote, um, there's a few things that I would do slightly differently. Um, number one is I would provide handouts um, containing puzzle, sorry, containing puzzles and links uh, to each curse breaker to make it easier for them to engage with the content and also to divide and conquer as well as a group uh, while still having a staff member host the room. I would also um, widen the variety of tasks contained within the escape room, as I mentioned a bit earlier, um, seeing how we can utilize other tools, um, um, other other mediums such as voice, uh, voice notes and things like that, but also uh, looking at other Microsoft tools uh, such as Microsoft Forms to provide different clues and challenges as well. Uh, number three, uh, this is more of a beginner error, um, but I would password protect the sections last and save a bunch of time. Um, although, to be fair, it did help me uh, to remember the passwords off by heart uh, because I've entered them so many times. Um, I think there was a period of time where I definitely dreamt about the passwords for this escape room. Um, number four, I would find a way to share a visual timer with the breakout rooms, uh, whether that's through Zoom or, or using the staff hosts. I think this would be beneficial for the participants, uh, particularly in terms of spiking their uh, competitiveness and, uh, and seeing that goal uh, get ever so nearer uh, in terms of that clock. Um, number five, um, I would integrate the SDG and UCM uh, related information more throughout rather than having it when they release the ghost. Often teams would see that they freed one and move quickly on to the next uh, rather than staying and reading uh, necessarily. So I would thread it more throughout the tasks. Um, there has been a suggestion that we create an escape room specifically about UCM sustainability work, uh, which will be scoping out the potential for, um, for our next Climate and Social Action Week this October. Um, now, because this was something new, I did, I did follow up with the students and staff who participated to garner their feedback, and they all seemed to enjoy themselves, uh, particularly working together and having a little competition between the rooms to who could break the curse the fastest um, and if like us you don't have much opportunity to bring students and staff together outside of their program this was a really chilled or maybe not so chilled if you are competitive um, way of connecting with each other um, so it was a great experience it was a great experience to to build it and to work with our students on uh, but it was also great to experience it uh, and see uh, students and staff experiencing it, experiencing it as well um, thank you very much uh, for listening to me today. Um, if you do have any questions and would like to get in touch, uh, please email me via my email address on the slide here, or, or, or please do reach out via LinkedIn. I'm always happy to chat. Um, and just a special thanks to again to my student officers uh, and co-creators of this adventure, Donna and Ash, uh, and also extending thanks to Hazel, uh, who introduced me to OneNote. Uh, but thank you again for listening.